Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. God loves you. God wants to bless you and prosper you, but you have to respond in faith. I was able to take that, believing it, and move ahead and operate in giving, believing for a harvest and getting harvest every time. Once I did that, I made more money than ever. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Wednesday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. Today, I'm in the middle of my third week of teaching on a subject that I've entitled Financial Stewardship. I have this in book form in English or Spanish. We also have study guides. We have CDs and DVDs. And I tell you, this is powerful. I've been kind of stuck for the last, I, I did two days last week and then the first two days this week, all talking about the parable from Luke chapter 16, verses 1 through 9. And I tell you, I could just stay on this forever. This has been one of the most uh, revolutionary things in my attitude towards finances. And some of you may be thinking, well, what do you mean your attitude towards finances? Did you know that the attitude that you have concerning money really dictates how much money you're going to get? And that may be a strange statement to some of you. Let me go over and just use this verse out of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and in verse 3. As a matter of fact, the whole 13th chapter is talking about love and how that if you speak with the tongues of men and of angels and don't do it with love, it profits you nothing. If you have prophecy so that you can prophesy and you know all mysteries and don't have love, it profits you nothing. And then in verse 3 it says, And if I give all of my goods to feed the poor, or give my body to be burned, talking about the ultimate sacrifice, laying down your life, and if you don't do it motivated by love, it profits you nothing. All of those verses are saying that the motive behind your actions are more important than your actions. And so I can take from that and say that your attitude about money is more important than your prayers. You may be praying and asking God to prosper you, but do you have the right attitude towards money? And that's what this whole parable is about. It's about a man who was stealing money from his master but blowing it on temporary things. When he found out he was going to be fired, he still stole money from his master, but he started using that money and giving it to other people to bribe them for his future so that when he was fired, he could go live with them and mooch off of them. And here's what Jesus said in the ninth verse. He says, and this is the uh, point of this parable. Here's his application, why he was saying this parable. He says, I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. Here it is in modern English. This is the Amplified Bible classic edition of Luke 16, 9. It says, And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous mammon, deceitful riches, money, possessions, so that when it fails, they, those you have favored, may receive and welcome you into everlasting habitations or dwellings. Here's the Amplified Bible in uh, just the regular, not the classic. It says in verse 9, And I tell you, learn from this, make friends for yourselves for eternity by means of the wealth of unrighteousness. That is, use material resources as a way to further the work of God so that when it runs out, they will welcome you into the eternal dwellings. And this is what I've been saying the last couple of days is, the whole purpose of this parable, Jesus was saying the reason He used this is to say that the greatest use of money isn't for temporary things, but it's for eternal things. You need to be long-term. You need to think not only about this life, just having a house, car, food, clothes, things, security, retirement for this life, but you need to start thinking about eternity. You can take things, money, material possessions that are someday going to be gone. Everything in this world, all money, everything like that is going to be gone someday. But if you use that money to affect people's lives with the gospel, then those lives, those changed lives will be in eternity and you will be reaping benefits from that 
throughout eternity. People will be coming and thanking you for giving. They will welcome you into everlasting habitations. You know, I believe if you go to heaven that there's no bad way to get there. Amen. If you get in by the skin of your teeth, praise God. But wouldn't it be, in a sense, bad for you to see somebody come into heaven and here are thousands of people to welcome them because they use their resources and they change people's lives. And then you come in and you spend all of your resources on just yourself and you made it into heaven and that's great. And heaven's going to be a blast. But no, you didn't bring anybody with you. You didn't touch anybody else's life. Now, again, I don't think that we're going to be depressed, discouraged, sad in heaven and stuff. So it's not like I'm saying that you're going to somehow or another suffer in heaven if you don't use your resources. But I can guarantee you this, that when you get to heaven and you see how that the money that you invested in the kingdom has changed people's lives and that that is going to last for eternity versus these things here on the earth that we, we put so much effort into, the house, the car, the things, and those things are all going to be gone. Instead of being sad, you are going to come to me and you're going to hug my neck. You're going to kiss me. You're going to thank me for getting that money out of your pocket and putting it into the kingdom because it's only what you give away that you get to keep. Everything you keep, you ultimately lose. Everything you give away into the gospel, everything you use to touch people and relieve suffering and, and to help these uh, girls that are caught in sex trafficking and get them out of that and that you give to the poor and that you give to preach the gospel and that you see people healed and you see marriages restored and everything that you do like that, that is never going to leave your life. It'll enter into eternity and you will be praising God with people a thousand years, a million years from now in eternity because of the way that you took the resources that God gave you and used it to touch a person's life. But I, I don't believe that we are going to be sad in heaven, but I, our perspective is going to be totally changed. And there's going to be people that were very wealthy. They had all of the things. In, the, in this life, people look at them and envy them. And yet when they get to heaven, they got nothing to show for all of that resources. Of course, the only thing that gets you into heaven isn't your good works. It's whether or not you've accepted Jesus as your Lord. And that's the basis of our entrance into heaven. But there are going to be rewards. And it says over in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, it talks about, you know, that when we stand before the Lord, every man's work will be tried of what sort it is. Not what size it is, but what sort it is. And if we have used wood, hay, and stubble, it's going to be burned up. If we have used gold, silver, and precious stones, that's going to last. And I'm just saying that when you use your money to touch people's lives, to share the gospel with them, to get them healed, delivered, set free, that's gold, silver, and precious stones, and you are going to receive rewards. And in heaven, you will literally be having rewards. People's lives changed. There's other people that have maybe done all of these great things in this life and gotten the acclaim of people, and their face has been on the magazine covers are on the news, but you know what? They haven't been doing it. They haven't been changing people's lives. And man, they're going to be there and everything, all of these great works that people have gotten, all of this praise, it's going to be reduced to ashes. And yet they will be saved, yet so as by fire. And so again, there's no bad way to get into heaven, but I'm saying that if you understood what Jesus is teaching in this parable, the attitude that we ought to have is, God, how little do I have to have to make it and to be a good representative of you to my family and to other people? And how much can I invest in changing people's lives? That's what Jesus is saying. And look at the 10th verse. It's continuing the same thing. In verse 10, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in that which is least is unjust also in much. Jesus right here is calling trusting God in this area of finances and using your finances first and foremost for the kingdom as being the least use of your faith. And now that's a radical statement. I've actually had people write in before when I'm teaching on finances and saying, how dare you use television, airtime, 
to teach on money. That is for the super saint. That's for the people that want to be the super dupers. You know, the, the professional Christians, you ought to be teaching on just basic baby stuff on television and reaching out to people. Jesus here is saying that this is the least use of your faith. If you can't do that which is least, you can't do that which is greater. You have to, first of all, become faithful in this area. You need to quit using the assets, the money, the prosperity that God has given you for just yourself, and you need to start being other people-minded. How can you parlay? How can you use what God has given you and leverage it to be a blessing to other people? Prosperity is not primarily for you. I'm going to say some things right here that just go over people's heads. Uh, you have to have the Holy Spirit to help you to understand what I'm saying right here because this is just so radically different than the way that most people think. But prosperity is not really for you. Prosperity is to empower you to be a blessing to other people. That's a radical statement. And I, I would say that the vast majority of people probably watching this program disagree with that. You may nod your head and because I'm saying some things from the Scripture, give some acknowledgement to it. But in practical, everyday things, most of us use money primarily for ourselves. We are thinking about ourselves. We want, we want a bigger house. We want a bigger car. We want nicer food. We want nicer clothes. We are thinking about ourselves, not about other people. And that is actually a hindrance to prosperity coming to you. Because look again at this in verse 10. He that is faithful in that which is least. And if you take this in his context, he's talking about money. What is being faithful with your money? Well, this whole parable is about using money to touch other people's lives so that when you die, they will receive you into heaven. It's money. The best use of money is to affect other people. So if you aren't doing that, if you're putting first your kingdom instead of God's kingdom, then you aren't being faithful. That's what he's talking about. He that is faithful in that which is least, talking about money, is faithful also in much. If you aren't faithful in this area, if you don't deal with money and begin to start using money to advance the kingdom and making that the goal, you know, as it says in Matthew 6.33, I've quoted this a number of times, but Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Do you know, if you take that in context, it's talking about money. Let me just turn over there and read this to you. In Matthew chapter 6 and in verse 19, it says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. This is talking about money. Don't just focus on treasures here on this earth, but you need to lay treasures up in heaven. Did you know you can't send money to heaven? I actually saw a little cartoon one time, and it was a guy who arrived at the gates of heaven, and there was this angel there to greet him, and he had these two big suitcases that he was holding, and they, they said, uh, what have you got in the suitcases? And he opened it up, and it was all gold bullion. And the angel says, what did you bring pavement up here for? Did you know the Bible says that the streets in heaven are paved with gold? It doesn't, money doesn't mean anything in heaven. This isn't talking about that you can send money to heaven, but what you can do is take money and use it to touch people's lives, invest it in the gospel, invest it in changing people, helping orphans, and, you know, doing all of the things that you can do with money. And when you do this, you are converting that money into something that is going to last in heaven. You are laying up treasures in heaven. And this is what he's talking about. He's talking about money. In the next verse, it says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. For the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. Did you know there's an Old Testament scripture that says, Don't be a partaker of him that hath an evil eye. 
And as you go on and read it, a person who has an evil eye is talking about money, who uses money just for themselves. And so this says that if your uh, eye be single, your whole body shall be full of light. But if your eye be evil, in other words, if you're using money just for yourself, then your whole body is full of darkness. And then he goes on and talks about you know, consider the lilies of the field. Look at the birds of the air. God supernaturally takes care of them. And then down in verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. This is talking about with your money. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all of these things. The things that He's talking about are what you eat, where you sleep, and what you're clothed with. In other words, financial prosperity comes as a result of you putting first the kingdom of God in your finances. Boy, that is a radical statement. This is the reason that the Bible says that we are supposed to give God the first fruits, not the last fruits, not the leftover fruits, but the first fruits. If you would seek God first with your money, then I guarantee you God would supernaturally take care of your finances. And this is the thing I'm saying that goes over the head of most people. Most people think it is absolutely your responsibility to work and to make money, and this is your money. You provided it, and then you tip God. You give God a little bit. But if you were to change that attitude to where, God, I am working for you, the first thing I want to do is to glorify you with my income. I want to touch people's lives so that when I die, they will welcome me into eternity. I want to lay up treasures in heaven. I want to take a portion of this prosperity that you've given me, and I want to touch people's lives. If you really did that with a pure heart and you were sincere in this, then here's a statement that you're just going to have to let the Holy Spirit help you with this. But when you put first the kingdom of God like that, God will take responsibility for providing your needs. Now, He will use you. I'm not telling you that you just lay home and don't go to work. You don't do anything, and God just rains the money out of heaven. But God will supernaturally bless the work of your hands, and you will prosper more accidentally than you ever did on purpose before when you felt like it was your responsibility to provide all of the needs. You know, I, again, could give you many testimonies on this, but my wife and I, when we got started in ministry, it's a long story, but we just decided to give things away. We have given away hundreds of millions of books, CDs, DVDs. Uh, we have over 50% of all of the people who write and request our materials. We give them out, with, and they don't give us anything. And then others, they give us something, but we gave it to them. We offered it to them for a gift of any amount. And so there's a lot of people that give, and of course, that's how our ministry functions. But my point is, we just chose to start giving. You know, even when I was a little kid, I got a dollar a week um, allowance, and I gave a dollar a week in the offering. And I guess my parents, because I did that, they would give me, and I could go get a soda every once in a while and do things. And so, I mean, I was taken care of. But I've given off of every penny that I've ever gotten in my life, I have given something off of it. And Jamie and I just do this automatically. We have a give account where we put 25% of everything we get in this give account, and that is just totally forgiving. And then we give a lot beyond that. There's sometimes, I got an inheritance one time, and I wound up giving that entire inheritance to my kids and stuff. So some, some years, we've given up to 90% away. But anyway, my point is that we give, we have always given, and we started out really poor. But because we gave and we put first the kingdom of God, God has just blessed me. I mean, He has blessed me supernaturally. I'm driving a pickup truck right now that somebody gave to me. It was, a, I think, a $67,000 pick, uh, pickup, and it's really nice. And I didn't buy it. It was just given to me. But I have given away dozens of cars to other people. And you know what? You reap what you sow. I didn't do it so that I could get a new pickup truck out of it, but I just did it because I was putting first the kingdom of God. I was blessing other people. And you can't do that without being blessed back. 
You know, when Jamie and I went to build the house that we live in right now, we bought 45 acres of property way out because I had horses and I wanted some property for my horses. And uh, we just really did not have enough money left over. To build a house. I only had, uh, I, I could only qualify for about $60,000 maximum in VA loan. And that was with zero down. And so what I was actually gonna do was to buy a double wide mobile home and put it on this property because that's all that we could afford. And I was at church one day and I was talking to a guy and he says, what are you gonna do? And I told him and he says, you know, I'm a contractor. I will build the house at cost and I can get it down to $60,000. It was probably a $120,000 house that we built, but we got it for $60,000 and then paid this man $3,000 just for his time and effort doing it. So uh, we moved in. And anyway, my point is that I probably got a house. I got $60,000 given to me basically when I bought that house and stuff just because we had been putting first the kingdom of God. I didn't make this happen. It was just God blessing me. A man came to me and offered to do this on his own. I'm saying that when you put first the kingdom of God, that's what Matthew is talking about, then it leads to prosperity. And this is counterintuitive. The natural person would think, no, if I take a portion and give it away, I'm going to have less. But God multiplies what you sow. That's the reason that the Bible uses a seed to illustrate giving, like over in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. God gives seed to the sower. That's talking about that when you give finances, it doesn't diminish your supply. It's like sowing a seed. That produ you know, if you sow a, a kernel of corn, you get back, I think it's 2,100 kernels of corn for every one that you plant. It takes a little bit of time for that to happen, but see, that's what happens. And when you give, you aren't diminished. You don't have less as a result of giving. God multiplies it back and it begins to grow. This is how you prosper in the kingdom. And you know, today's going to be my last day to teach on, on this uh, parable about the sower, uh, about the steward in Luke chapter 16. But it leads into my next teaching talking about that if you understand what I'm saying, true prosperity isn't selfish. True prosperity is so that you can be a blessing. As the Lord told Abraham over in Genesis chapter 12, I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. You can't be a blessing to other people until you first of all are blessed. So you need to prosper. You need to prosper. You need to have money, but not just so that you can get more stuff, but so that you can be a bigger blessing. When you get that attitude straight, if God can find somebody with that attitude where the money will flow through instead of stopping and damming it up and just accumulating it and putting it into stocks and bonds so that you can feel good about your future. When you get to where you can give and let the money flow through, if God can get it through you, He will get it to you if you will be a faithful steward. Man, that's powerful. Today's my last day to offer... I think it's the third teaching in this series, uh, free of charge, no charge to you. If you want the entire series, we're going to ask you for a gift of some amount. You can get this book for a gift of any amount, and we have it not only in English, but in Spanish. We have CDs, DVDs, study guides, and we've got an additional CD, uh, DVD here that has testimonies of people that have taken these principles and put them into practice, and it's working for them. If you'll listen, our announcer can give you that information about how to receive these products. And I encourage you to please call or write today and receive them. This will change your life. Then join me again tomorrow as we continue the gospel truth. Ready to get more out of God's Word than ever before? We gladly announce the newly recreated Andrew Womack Living Commentary. Study with Andrew from Genesis to Revelation. This living commentary is packed with a lifetime of Andrew's own footnotes on over 32,000 verses and counting. This extensive living commentary contains multiple translations of the Bible, including the King James Version Plus, along with Strong's Concordance, where you can find the original Greek and Hebrew text. 
Andrew has also provided you with several historically respected commentaries. It's never been easier for you to study through the Bible with Andrew. Priced at only $120, this continuously updated living commentary is now available exclusively as a download for both Mac and Windows at awmi.net. I would like to encourage you to get this teaching that I have on financial stewardship. As I've said during the teaching, it's a different approach than most people take on prosperity, but I believe it's scriptural. You need to develop this attitude of stewardship, not ownership. So I have it in book form, and then we have a study guide that is the same material, just reformatted specifically so you can disciple other people. You can print out the material and have the questions right there. We have CDs and DVDs on this. And I also have the book and study guide in Spanish. And then we have a companion DVD where I have testimonies of six different people who have put this into practice and now they're prospering. Listen to our announcer as he gives you this information. Andrew's complete teaching titled Financial Stewardship is available in either a CD or DVD album or as a book or companion study guide. Also available is the Financial Breakthroughs DVD, which includes six true stories of people that experience the freedom of turning their finances over to God. Each of these valuable resources is available for a gift of any amount. Or you can get the Financial Stewardship Package. This package includes the book, study guide, in your choice of either the CD or DVD album, as well as the Financial Breakthroughs DVD. This package has a catalog value of $115, but you can get it today for only $80. The individual topic highlighted on today's broadcast is available as an audio CD for a gift of any amount when you write or call. We encourage everyone to give because there's a blessing in giving. But if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide today's teaching free of charge. This is the last day we'll be offering this teaching, so be sure to respond today. You can order resources or become a grace partner Hello, this through is Andrew our website Womack, and at I want to make you aware of what I'm calling the While there, you can discover more product rally. details and download additional free resources. In our place or call our helpline Monday Park, through Colorado. Friday from 4.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. to motivate Christians to get involved in our culture and participate. We're going to have state senators and representatives speaking. We appreciate your generosity. We are expecting this to make a big We're going to have Dr. Lance Wall now with us. We're going to have Richard Harris, Mark Cower, who runs our practical government school. And Hello, it's going this to be is Andrew great Womack, and I Man, want to invite you, you to join me on September the 19th through the 21st in Woodbridge, Come join us Virginia. On September the 14th I'm going to be at the Hilton the Memorial God Chapel. We've route. been there many times and just always have great meetings. And this year, I'm going to have Jeremy Welcome to Gospel Truth with I Andrew Womack, you, these a teaching are ministry that focuses on God's unconditional in the body love of Christ and grace. It's going to be See, a great time. Of course, we'll have steward. Jamie with I'm me, and we'll have Charlie and Jill LeBlanc doing praise and worship. It's just going to be a great time when you of ministry. Giving, it uh, starts praise, a super uh, prayer for people. Remember, it's September the 19th ability. through the 21st, God will bless Hilton Memorial Chapel in Woodbridge, Virginia. make things work better than they ever could have. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. Today I'm in the middle of my teaching on a subject that I've entitled Financial Stewardship. I tell you, this is really powerful. I, I get blessed every time I go back and teach this because this truth totally changed my life. You know, I was actually raised in a pretty well-to-do home. I was not raised in poverty or anything like that.
teach Hello, that you are Andrew to Wama, prosper. And I want to make Every you aware of what I'm calling prosper. the Every God we trust it has going to be held on September it's the 14th. Hypocritical. Anyway, I'm going to begin to start. I've Lone already Park, laid Colorado, a foundation. I've been and teaching this is on this to for three weeks. Christians to get involved in our culture and participate. Uh, I've We're going to have gone state out of my senators way to teach and representative stewardship. We are I didn't name this how to, to make prosper. How We're going to have Dr. Lance Wall now like with us. That. Even We're going to have Richard Harris, Mark Howard, who runs our practical Jesus died to produce. And it's going to be a great time. Man, if you love this country and you want to be a part of seeing it turn around but I specifically Come join us on September the 14th now for the In God about we Trust how that you rally. need to see God as your source. You are a steward of His resources. Welcome this to Gospel Truth and I've with gone Andrew Wallace, a, a teaching ministry that to focuses on God's unconditional love and because grace. only if see, you this have is the right the attitude, attitude, attitude towards I'm money just giving back is it a blessing. to you a portion. I'm going to be using this scripture over in First Timothy. When you start giving, but it starts by those who hasten to be rich that it takes away the life of the owners thereof. God will bless you more than you deserve. God will bless you and there are better than they ever could have. To preach and now here's the Andrew. And every Welcome time to our they Thursday's that, broadcast of the gospel emphasizing that if you Today I'm in to the middle of my teaching so on a subject house, that I've entitled so Finding More things. Stewardship. They equate that with this greed. Really powerful. And there's a I, number I of scriptures that talk about and against this greed. Because and this so they immediately truth. say that. But let me just say that if Holy you have this attitude life. that I've got enough, you know, I was actually raised and I don't in a want pretty well to do home. That God I was has not given me, I don't have very much. I don't like drive that. a good car, but, but it's the it's church dependable. that I like and get around. Actually, I don't live in, in a, a nice house, but at least, you know, I'm they out of the weather. And money. I just barely they taught got against to get by. riches. People will often and quote Philippians kind of chapter 4, four verse I remember 19, a man one time on my God radio, I was listening to him, need, and he was speaking to his riches against glory, and health, say that he wealth, doesn't supply preachers. your wants. So he supplies you know, only the very minimum. Because why would you, I mean, if you are against health and wealth, that means that you are for and there's people uh, that will preach that and actually think and that's a godly thing. Why would anybody say, say I don't have much, things. but I have but this enough. man basically was saying, I don't want anybody who it's teaches wrong that God to wants you to prosper and stuff. And this they is will equate that gospel. with greed. Did you know that and that is he was actually preaching a very against that selfish and right attitude. after. Because His that program got statement over, it was like on a that. Christian radio station mean uh, that they you came think on with the money Christian news is only and for this you. exact man and for that your was teaching needs. on radio. And they once said your that needs that are met, he was moving well, then into forget the rest of the world. Dollar I mean, I've got enough. I don't want any more. I'm an indoor Olympic size that swimming pool. That is a pool. very and here he was preaching against health, wealth. If you understand the things that I've been taught, you aren't supposed to prosper. Money empowers you to be a blessing, and so that you can affect people. Lives and stuff. that they can enter it's into eternity. People will be anyway. Born I'm going to begin to start. Healed, I've already laid a foundation. I've been teaching free. on this for Children three weeks. Return and if you all these kind of things, if you can understand, uh, I've specifically that money gone out of my way to teach these on things as you share the truth with people. Well, I didn't name this how to prosper, be, that, how man, to get rich, or something like that. Even though prosperity is a part of what Jesus died to produce, I'm going to share that out of Second Corinthians chapter eight, verse nine. That is greedy. But I you don't specifically the emphasize for two and a half weeks prosperity now about is not how that you need to see Let me God say it this way. Biblical as your source. You are a steward of selfish. His resources. Although this isn't it your does money. benefit And I've you gone out of my way for two and a half weeks to but try the real and get this point across. When you begin to start because thinking only the way if that you the have the right teaches, attitude it's not so that you money. can have more. It's is so it a that blessing? You can be a bigger I'm going to be using these scriptures Let me share a scripture with you on this. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28, it says, Let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor, is the root working of all with his hands, and there the are thing things which is good that he may have to give to him that need it. And every time Look they at the do that, it's because of you they start laboring with your you hands. The reason you do this, so this you is so that you can pay your bills, so that you can provide, so that you can have food. And there's a number of scriptures that talk about it. Says the reason you labor is so that you can have. But let me just say that if you have this attitude that I've got enough. 
This is and right. I don't want any more. This is this that is God has this given me. Right. I don't have very much. I don't drive. There's a, a lot good of it. Well, no. The reason I'm working is I've got car payments. I've got insurance payments. I've got a house payment. I've got to have food. I've got to have clothes. I've got kids. I've got kids going through college. I've got to work so that I can do all of these things. No, the Bible says the reason my God will supply all of your needs according to His riches and glory, and they'll say that He doesn't supply your wants. He supplies only the best people. I know that there's people all over the world right now. Minimum standard. This God is, is just a barely get world. by kind of God. You preachers. And there's can people preach that will preach like that this, and actually you know, think that's a go godly thing and, and they'll say, I don't have much. And stuff but you don't have, have enough, everybody just give I'm it content. to you. Well, anyway, I don't I want any more. I think it's wrong but to My want point to is, and that they know the real that reason that did you know work that, that is, is so that you can prosper and be a blessing to Because that, this is exactly. What Matthew mean chapter that six you is think money Matthew chapter is only six for you and seek and first for your needs the kingdom and once of your God needs are met and his righteousness well, then forget and the rest all of, the of these things I mean I've got enough that I don't know what you more. eat I'm content where you sleep what what's your clothes that with is a Matthew chapter six verses nineteen attitude. through thirty three if you go if you that, understand the things that I've been talking about and it says that when you put first the kingdom of God in your to be a blessing God and so that you can affect people's lives and that they can enter into and God is El Shaddai. Be born again, not El Chifil. Healed, the God will take care of you said better. Children will return to take care of All these kind of things. If you can understand, you know, I had a man that, that for money a number of years accomplished these years. things. As he you bought share the me truth with people. Well, then your attitude uh, I would go to be and that, man, buy I the car, prosper, but he made the not so that I can on. just so get bigger and more. You know, he, he bought so these cars for me, and he bought me really If you're saying I've got enough and I don't, and I actually went to him one time. That is actually selfish. That is greedy. I said people look at me and ask what I do for a living. True prosperity they think well a minister shouldn't be driving this nice Let me say car. it this way. Biblical and I tell him, I said, but it's a gift. Is what do I do? Selfish. Turn it down Although and go drive it does something benefit that is less so that I could look better but in your eyes. But the real attitude, that's just, when you begin to start Amen. thinking the way that the this Bible man was teaches, buying these cars from me. And so I told him, I said, it's embarrassing. So that you can and he came back blessing. to me and he says, let me share a scripture with you on this. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 28, it says, let him that stole steal no more. But rather man, let him that labor, was, you talk about a working with his shift. hands, the thing which is good, shift. that he may have I mean, that to was give huge. to him that needeth. But he began to Look explain the God pays of you laboring with, with your hands. God the reason you do this is so that you can pay your bills, he, the so that you can provide, so that you can have food stones. on the table. So that, God no, is that's not what it's saying. Not it says the reason you labor is so that you can have when you give to him that needs the kingdom of God. But most people this is do not put first this is, the kingdom this of God is, in this their giving. They actually put first There's a lot themselves. of it. Well, no, the reason I'm working is I've got may disagree car payments. With that, I've got insurance payments. I've got house payments. I've, I've got to people have food. I've got to have clothes. I've got kids. And so, you know, I'd I've love got to help you and I'd love I've to got to work so that I can do all of these things. But I just don't have it. No, the Bible says the reason The truth is they have money. It's so that you have a lot of money that flows through their hands. What they mean is I am putting first And I know that there's people all over the world right now. So I'm going to pay all of this my is bills not the way first. It works in the real I'm going to pay my mortgage, you my insurance, my house payment, my like car payment. But, you know, somebody's got to go out and out work and, and make uh, money. This money and stuff. You don't have everybody just to entertain, entertain my well, family. Anyway, I'm going to do could all of these things. That. And if but I had my anything left is, over, I'd be glad to give to God. That no, the real that's not reason that you work is so that you can prosper. You and be need a blessing to give to, people. to God. This is first. exactly you need to put God what Matthew first chapter in six is saying. You know, some of you Matthew watching this program probably have a budget first. And I guarantee you that God. the average person and his right down a budget, and then they all of these things, things and the things that it's talking about, rent, or what they write you down. Eat. Where you what sleep, what their clothes, is, their with, insurance, Matthew their chapter food, six, their, verses nineteen uh, through thirty, you know, their entertainment, you their that. clothes. They write all and these it says things that down. When and most people first when they make the kingdom out a of God budget, in your finances, don't even then put God in there. But if they do, it's kind of your needs left over. And God and if is you ever get into a pinch not where you had some emergency, God will take care of you better than you would ever take care of yourself back on their giving. You know, I had a man that you know, for I saw a number a of years, survey, I think it was 12 years, he bought in me 2000 new cars. And eight, uh, right there I would at the go end of 2008 and buy the and car, but he made the payments. The stock market so crashed, in, and we had what you know, some he, people he called the Great Recession. And he bought me George really a nice car. Did a survey, and I actually and went to him one time, and I said, "This is one embarrassing." Way. 
that Christians I said, people cope look at with me the and ask what I do the for a living when I tell them I'm a minister. They think, well, a minister shouldn't be driving this Most nice of a car. Most people see giving to and the I tell Lord them, I said, and to the Lord's work. But it's a gift. Work. What do I do? Turn it down and go extra. drive something if you have any that is extra, less if you have so any that I can look better in your eyes. That's just things are that's taken bad care of. business. You're Amen. glad to give. As this man was buying this car for me, and I told him, I said, it's embarrassing. Put you in a position and he came back where you have to says, do without if something you that you aren't really want. If you have something about left your over, level of pos- then prosperity, you'll be glad then to God's give into the kingdom of God. That is not putting first. And man, that was the you talk about a paradigm to put shift. first that was a the kingdom of God. Means that if you write I mean, out a budget, huge. the very first thing. But you he began do to explain say, God pays his streets. And again, with I'm not limited to God. 10%. That's makes what it was under the old covenant. One large what we pearl. have under he, the new the covenant is so of much the new better Jerusalem are that now it's voluntary stone. instead God of dictated the way that the tithe was. But I believe God will bless you when you put first. But anyway, whatever it is, ten percent, fifteen, twenty, whatever it is, you desire. To give, Most not people don't write that down first. God in as I've got they to have this much money because this is how much I want to give. And I know some of you may disagree you know, with that. You know, a farmer, but let me just if you go give out some examples and here. I've if had you, people you come to me sit by there the and thousands. say, "All right, I need and so, this you know, I'd much love to money help you, to and come I'd love to help you crops. do these things." Did you know but how much money you need? How much crops you need to grow? Dictate. They have a lot of money that flows through their hands. What they mean is, let's say that you needed first, you know, a hundred acres. Of I'm going to pay all of my bills up. first. And you needed this I'm going to pay my in order to be my able to pay all my house things. payment, well, my car payment. I'm going to go how much out and sow. use uh, what you money read to entertain is dictated myself, to entertain my family. I'm going to do and all of these so, things. When and it comes if to I had your anything left over, did you know, here's the way you ought to look at it. If you want hundred thousand dollars, that's that's your goal. And you need a hundred thousand or hundred fifty thousand dollars a year or something for you. Well, then that should dictate. How much you know, you some sold. of you watching this program probably have, and a I budget. believe that the minimum ought to be. And I can guarantee you that the so if you need a hundred thousand dollars, well, then you ought to plan. Down God, I want to give ten thousand dollars right down this year, and you write them down, and that insurance, ought to be the first their food, line on their, their budget. Uh, you See, know, that's putting first. Their clothes, they write the all these things down, and most people, when they make out a budget first, don't even put their needs in there. But if they did, if there's something left over, they're glad. And if you ever get into a pinch where you had some emergency. It's not the focus. The very first thing. And did you know that that attitude right there will actually tend towards poverty? You know, I saw a bond survey. If you do it thousand. And you put eight, right there first at the end the of 2000. You put 2009 touching when the stock market lives, crashed, changing and we lives had what with some the people call the Great Recession. You invest your money in George that. Barna, and when did you get that attitude and, and you found put out that first the number the of one God, way, then God that will supernaturally with the downturn in start the economy taking care of your needs, needs. decrease And their again, giving. God is El Shaddai. Most people not see giving to the Lord in charge of taking care of your needs as something that is extra. If and you what have you any have extra, if you, you know, have I use this example on my program all of these yesterday, other but are taken the, care of. when Jamie and, and I started building our house, I think it was it 30, cramp your style, uh, as long 31 as it doesn't or 32 put you in a position where you have and to we do started without building something our house. That you really I, only, want. I could only if you have something for left over thousand dollars with a VA no down in the kingdom. I mean, we were not that is not great financial shape. But because we had put to put first, first the, kingdom the kingdom of God, God means that if you I write out a budget, a the very bill, first thing it was you do probably is worth ten percent, twenty, or and again, I'm not limited to ten percent. When I built it under back the old covenant, one year, what ago. we have under the Today, new covenant our tax is evaluation so much better is nearly half that now it's voluntary instead of dictated the way that the tithe was. But and I'm saying that God took care 10%. of me better than I would have taken care of But anyway, whatever it is, would have taken care of myself, then I could have taken care of myself because most I people don't write that down first. I had a man who was a contractor money literally because build this my is how much I want cost. to give. And give it to you me. know and a farmer. If you go out and if you you in the sit there and say, "All right, I need nice this house. much God's money to come with. in from my crops." So my point Did you is, know is how that much when you put money, first you need how much crops you need to grow. Then God will supernaturally how much you start plant. taking care of your. Let's needs. say that you needed if you, you know a hundred acres under duress of wheat. If you to can't come up sleep and you need this you're wondering wheat how crop in order to be able to pay all you, the things. You feel well, like I've got to do something. How much you sow? 
I would what you reap you is you dictated really by what you sow. Of God. And so when, when it you comes take to your care personal God's thing, kingdom, did you know here's the way God you ought will to look at it. If you want a hundred thousand dollars, if that's your goal, and you need a hundred thousand or a hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year or something for you, well then that should dictate how much you bless you and do things to you. And I believe that the minimum ought to be first percent. So if you need a hundred thousand dollars, well then I know that somebody said, God, I do put first ten thousand dollars. Can I this look year, at and your you finances write that down and, and that, that ought to be the first line. How much are you budget? spending? See, that's on putting all these first other things versus the how kingdom much you of God. Give. But no, most you know, people I had a man put first all of that their this man needs, that I was talking about. That and bought then, me these if there's cars something left over, years, they're glad to give. And stuff. And but this man, um, it's not he, the focus. He lived in a very nice house. And did you know house, that that I mean, attitude right there will actually tend what I had. poverty? He drove really nice cars God and stuff like this, and he was a preacher. If you do and it people correctly, criticized him. You put first. But the did you know what they you didn't understand? Was touching people's that this man lives, changing gave lives a lot. with the power of the gospel, get, and when you, you invest your money into the kingdom that, of God, and when you get that attitude and you put first the kingdom of God, God will supernaturally cause you to prosper. He will take care of your kingdom. Of you your take needs. care of his kingdom. And, and again, so here's God what I told people, people I, that they criticized him for the God house that he charged of taking care of your and needs, the cars that he drove and things like this. What but I knew done. behind the you know, scenes I used this how much example he was on my giving program away. yesterday, but and the, he was Jamie and I started somewhere building around our house, I think it was $40,000 per month. Um, 31 or 32 years And I don't know his total situation, but I was at his house one time. I could only qualify for $60,000 when he gave me, I think it was $20,000 with a VA down at his church. I mean, we were not in a great financial shape. And he gave but him because a brand new we Cadillac had that was worth over thirty thousand dollars, so that right had there was about house fifty-five thousand dollars. And then a friend came through, a missionary, and, missionary, and he gave him ten thousand dollars when I built for his ministry. So that was a what would that have been? Today, our tax evaluation dollars that he gave away in one day that I was there. Our house and so when you add like up that. this man's but giving, I'm saying that God his house took that care he lived of me in better was only about than I would have taken care of myself than I could have taken care of myself giving. because I put first. Now the see, some people God. only look at the I fact had a man that he lived in a, a contractor who literally house, build my house and they house say, "Well, man, he, you know, a preacher shouldn't and be and living like that." But don't ever criticize a man's harvest until you see how much seed God's blessed us with it. Your harvest so is determined is that, see, when you by put the seeds that you plant. Of God, this man gave so God much will that the house he lived in, even though it was an expensive house, it was only if about you are under months stress, worth under his giving. How many of you, you can't would sleep like to live at night because you're wondering how am I going to make all of this happen? And you you feel like I've got give. to do something. Amen. I would suggest I can just see some of you right now figuring this out. Oh, you give a. Hundred dollars a month, care of God's and so fourteen God months, fourteen hundred dollars. How many God of you would like to be living in a fourteen hundred dollar like house? This contractor that gave me my see, house. See, you can't at criticize price. a person's God harvest until you see you how much and do seed they've given. To you. I was visiting with Chris Low Dollar one time. He's become a very good friend of mine in this. And I know that some of you say, "Well, we I do put in first people the kingdom were criticizing of God." Can I look at your house. finances and house. see that? I've heard people talk. How about much are it, you spending? He lives in a nice house. He, other he drives a Rolls Royce. It was given to him. He you didn't know, I had buy a man. People gave it to him. He actually got so embarrassed over driving this fancy car, a black man, and you know, driving this fancy car. He figured people he, were either going to think he was a nice drug house, dealer I mean, an or uh, much you know, something, or he had stolen the car. He drove and so really anyway, nice he sold the car like because this, of what he was people would think about him. And, and then the Lord got on his case and he says, "Those." But did you know what they didn't understand was as that this man inspired it. This was my when you give when you put in the first the kingdom of God and crept. You cannot had to repent. Out give God, and he God will the car back at a loss. You and so he's doing he it out of obedience. Of but people criticize Creflo over the lifestyle kingdom. that he lives. And, and we so here's what I told people: one time, and I forget that they the criticized him for the house that he some lived of this in, wrong, and me, the cars that he drove, and things like this. Say it exactly. But I knew behind as the scenes how much he was giving away. I think over a hundred, and he was giving away somewhere around thirty to forty thousand dollars per month. 
And I don't know he's his so total homes. situation, when but I was at his house homes, one you time can't help when but he read gave me, I think it was very, uh, very $20,000 nice for He has given away church. multiple And there was a friend of mine of that was staying with him, and he gave him a brand new Cadillac that, that was worth over $30,000. A Rolls Royce that so was that right there was about $55,000. So nice. And then a friend came stuff. through, but a missionary, see, don't and he gave him $10,000 for his ministry. So that was a, see how much seed he's put in the The people that are criticizing Creflo, I can guarantee they haven't Sown so when you add up this man's people, giving, they haven't sold his hundreds of he cars in. into was only about and yet fourteen quick months him. worth. Don't ever criticize giving. a person's harvest. Now see, some until people only look at the fact that he lived in a multi-million-dollar house when and they you say, "Well, man, you, he, you know, a preacher shouldn't be living God. like that." When but you are don't using ever criticize your resources a man's to harvest bless until other you see people. how much seed I guarantee he you, you planted. start a supernatural your divine is determined towards you by God the seed that you will add all this these other things to This man gave so much that the house he lived in, even though it was an expensive house, it says in Mark chapter fourteen months that there's not a single Person. How many no of man you would like to house, live father, mother, in a brother, house that sister, equal 14 months for my worth sake, of what you've given? But he will receive a hundredfold Amen. in this life I can just see some of you right now figuring this out. If you truly you have a pure heart and the motive behind your gift is more so important 14 than your gift. But when you start giving and truly how many of you would like God's to be kingdom living in first. a $1,400 house? God will start multiplying finances to you a hundred times you can't criticize a person's harvest until you see how much seed to they come, but in this, I was life. visiting with Creflo Dollar one so the time. So way up a very good in God's kingdom been a is down. And we were talking and people the way to prosper in God's kingdom isn't nice to hoard, but it's house. to open up your I've hands and start about giving it, and using he lives your in a money nice to house. prosper. He, he drives and build a first the kingdom it was of God. given to him. When you put God's kingdom people gave it to him. He actually got so embarrassed over driving this fancy car. A black man, you know, driving this fancy car. He figured people were even going to think. He was a drug to dealer, I am or not the perfect uh, you know example. something, or he had stolen the car. I haven't done as much. And as so well, anyway, like he sold the Crefford car because of what people would think about him. And then the Lord got on his case and he multiple says, cars gave me. this to you. I have given finances, as a gift. hundreds I and thousands of this dollars, was millions of dollars, to you, and you did I've given to other people to help them. And Crefford had to repent. And you know what? Because of it, and he went and bought the car back at a loss. And so he's doing it out of obedience. But people criticize Creflo over the lifestyle. I'm out of time he today, we but I've got this teaching entitled Financial Stewardship. I would encourage you to please get this. Creflo I've got it in English, in Spanish. Say it exactly. I've got study guides. But as we I've got talk, DVDs, he has given CDs away, on this, and we've got an extra bonus uh, DVD he's that is the testimonies of other people who have taken these same principles that I'm talking about. He's homes. When you sow a hundred homes, you can't help but reap people. A very, very nice. Testimony he has works. given away if you multiple listen, hundreds we'll give you information of cars about to how people. You can receive and because all of these that, products. he reaped back. Andrew's complete teaching titled Financial Stewardship so nice is available on stuff. either a CD see, don't or DVD album Creflo's or as a book or companion study guide. You see how much seed he's also available the is the Financial Breakthroughs DVD, you, which includes six true stories of people that experienced the freedom of turning their finances into over other to people's God. lives. And yet they're quick Each to of these valuable him. resources is available a for a gift of any amount. Or you can get the financial Financial Stewardship Package. When you get to where you this seek first the Kingdom of God. This package includes the book, study guide, when you are your using choice your of either the CD to bless or DVD album, as well as the Financial Breakthroughs DVD. Divine flow this package you has a catalog value well, of $115. Things things to you. But you 6, can get it today for only $80. And that's a promise of God. It says also, in Mark Andrew chapter would like 10 to make available his redesigned person, living no commentary Bible house, software. Father, mother, brother, Download sister, your copy of Andrew's living sake, commentary and start studying through the Bible with Andrew today. With persecution. The living if commentary is available a pure for both Mac and, and PC behind your for a gift of only $120. But when you start giving and truly as a download at awmi.net. God will start multiplying The individual topic highlighted to on today's broadcast is available this as an audio CD not just in the one to for come, a but gift of any life. amount when you write or call. So the way up we encourage in God's everyone to give is because down, there's a to blessing in giving. The way to prosper but if you're simply God's unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide today's teaching your free money 
in charge. To prosper and build you can order resources or become a great partner God's through our website first, at awmi.net. While there, you can discover you more product details and download God. additional free resources. Man, I testify to or that. call I our helpline Monday it. through Friday I am from 4.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. I haven't done as much Mountain as what like I was talking about dollar, but man, I've given away dozens of cars, 11, and you know 11. what? I've had multiple cars given Use the address on your screen. I have given finances we appreciate your generosity of dollars, and hope to hear from you dollars. today. I've given to other people to help them in their need. And you know what? Because of it, God blesses me and finances come back. I'm telling you, this is how you prosper in God's kingdom. I'm out of time today, but I've got this teaching entitled Before Financial Stewardship. Before you even have a need, God has already supplied you to your need. Get this. I've got it in I know English, that all day long Spanish. people are being blessed here and their lives guys. are being changed. I've got DVDs, if there's anything CDs you want to know about this, anything, got an then Jesus is the one. Folks, the moment you get DVD saved, you want to show the world what Jesus has done for you. I'm just enjoying being fed by people that have walked places that I haven't walked. If you lay foundations in people's lives, they will get a hold of grace. Because you can't be. The pastor and do what a pastor does. Because you can't be. The pastor and do what a pastor does. Because you can't be. The pastor and do what a pastor does. Because you can't be. The pastor and do what a pastor does. Because you can't be. The pastor and do what a pastor does. Because you can't be. The pastor and do what a pastor does. Because you can't be. The pastor and do what a pastor does. Because you can't be. The pastor and do what a pastor does. Because you can't be. The pastor and do what a pastor does. Because you can't be. The pastor and do what a pastor does. Because you can't be. The pastor and do what a pastor does. Because you can't be. The pastor and do what a pastor does. Because you can't be. The pastor and do what a pastor does. Because you can't be. The pastor and do what a pastor does. Because you can't be. The pastor and do what a pastor does. Also it's time available for us to is the Financial the Breakthroughs DVD, which includes six Spirit. true stories of people that experience the freedom of turning their finances over to God. Hello, this is Each Andrew Womack, and I'd like to encourage you to check out our Gospel Truth TV. Amount. You are going to be blessed. So check it out. It's 24-7, gospeltruth.tv. book, study guide, and your choice of either the CD or DVD album as well as the Financial Breakthroughs DVD. This package has a catalog value of $115, but you can get it today for only $80. Also, Andrew would like to make available his redesigned Living Commentary Bible software. Download your copy of Andrew's Living Commentary and start studying through the Bible with Andrew today. The Living Commentary is available for both Mac and PC for a gift of only $120 exclusively as a download at awmi.net. The individual topic highlighted on today's broadcast is available as an audio CD for a gift of any amount when you write or call. We encourage everyone to give because there's a blessing in giving. But if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide today's teaching free of charge. You can order resources or become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. Or call our helpline Monday through Friday from 4.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time at 719-635-1111. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. Before you even have a need, God has already supplied your need. I know that all day long people are being blessed here and their lives are being changed. If there's anything you want to know about anything, then Jesus is the one. Folks, the moment you get saved, you ought to show the world what Jesus has done for you. I'm just enjoying being fed by people that have walked places that I haven't walked. If you lay foundations in people's lives, they will get a hold of grace. Because you can't be a pastor and do what a pastor does without grace. I feel like this is an opportunity at the minister's conference for ministers to receive the ministry that we need. You're gonna to speak to the mountain and it's gonna move. But first you gotta have faith in God. It's time for us to rediscover the full power of the Holy Spirit. Hello, this is Andrew Womack and I'd like to encourage you to check out our Gospel Truth TV. You are gonna be blessed, so check it out. It's 24 seven gospeltruth.tv
Hello, this is Andrew Womack, and I want to make you aware of what I'm calling the In God We Trust Rally. It's going to be held on September the 14th in our place here in Woodland Park, Colorado. And this is to motivate Christians to get involved in our culture and participate. We're going to have state senators and representatives speaking. We are expecting this to make a big impact. We're going to have Dr. Lance Wall now with us. We're going to have Richard Harris, Mark Coward, who runs our practical government school. And it's going to be a great time. Man, if you love this country and if you want to be a part of seeing it turn around and head towards the Lord, come join us on September the 14th for the In God We Trust rally. Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. See, this is the attitude of a steward. I'm just giving back to you a portion of what you've given me. When you start giving, it starts a supernatural flow towards you of God's ability. God will bless you more than you deserve. God will bless you and make things work better than they ever could have. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. Today, I'm in the middle of my teaching on a subject that I've entitled Financial Stewardship. I tell you, this is really powerful. I, I get blessed every time I go back and teach this because this truth totally changed my life. You know, I was actually raised in a pretty well-to-do home. I was not raised in poverty or anything like that, but the church that I went to actually, in a sense, taught poverty. They taught against having money. They taught against riches. And it's kind of hypocritical in a way. I remember a man one time on radio, I was listening to him, and he was speaking against health wealth preachers, which, you know, that's kind of amusing to me because why would you... I mean, if you are against health and wealth, that means that you are for uh, sickness and poverty. Why would anybody advocate those things? But this man basically was saying that anybody who teaches that God wants you to prosper and stuff, that this is a false gospel, and he was preaching against that. And right after his program got over, it was on a Christian radio station, uh, they came on with the Christian news, and this exact man that was teaching on radio, they said that at that day he was moving into his $8 million mansion that he had built with an indoor Olympic-sized swimming pool. And here he was preaching against health wealth preachers. People who teach that you aren't supposed to prosper, every one of them is prospering. Every one of them has money and stuff. It's kind of hypocritical. Anyway, I'm going to begin to start. I've already laid a foundation. I've been teaching on this for three weeks. And if you've watched these broadcasts, uh, I've specifically gone out of my way to teach on financial stewardship. I didn't name this how to prosper, how to get rich, or something like that, even though prosperity is a part of what Jesus died to produce. I'm going to share that out of 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. But I've specifically emphasized for two and a half weeks now about how that you need to see God as your source. You are a steward of His resources. This isn't your money. And I've gone out of my way for two and a half weeks to try and get this point across because only if you have the right attitude towards money is it a blessing. I'm going to be using these scriptures over in 1 Timothy chapter 6, but it talks about those who hasten to be rich, that it takes away the life of the owners thereof, that the love of money is the root of all evil. And there are things that people use to preach against prosperity. And every time they do that, it's because they start emphasizing that if you are wanting to be rich just so you can have a bigger house, bigger car, so that you can have more things, they equate that with greed. And there's a number of scriptures that talk about against greed. And so they immediately say that. But let me just say that if you have this attitude that I've got enough, and I don't want any more that God has given me. I don't have very much. I don't drive a good car, but it's, it's dependable. I can get around. I don't live in a nice house, but at least, you know, I'm out of the weather, and I've just barely got enough to get by. 
People will often quote Philippians chapter 4, verse 19 that says, But my God shall supply all of your need according to His riches in glory. And they'll say that He doesn't supply your wants. He supplies only the very minimum, the minimum standard. God is just a barely get by kind of God. And there's people that will preach that and actually think that's a godly thing. And they'll say, I don't have much, but I have enough. I'm content. I don't want any more. I think it's wrong to want to prosper. And they will equate that with greed. Did you know that that is actually a very selfish attitude? Because that statements like that mean that you think money is only for you and for your needs. And once your needs are met, well, then forget the rest of the world. I mean, I've got enough. I don't want any more. I'm content with what I've got. That is a very selfish attitude. If you understand the things that I've been talking about, how that money empowers you to be a blessing and so that you can affect people's lives and that they can enter into eternity, people will be born again, spirit-filled, healed, delivered, marriages will be set free, children will return to the Lord, all these kind of things. If you can understand that money can accomplish these things as you share the truth with people, well, then your attitude ought to be that, man, I want to prosper, not so that I can just get bigger and more, but so that I can be a bigger blessing. If you're saying, I've got enough and I don't want any more, that is actually selfish. That is greedy. You don't understand the purpose of money. True prosperity is not selfish. Let me say it this way. Biblical prosperity isn't selfish although it does benefit you tremendously. But the real attitude, when you begin to start thinking the way that the Bible teaches, it's not so that you can have more. It's so that you can be a bigger blessing. Let me share a scripture with you on this. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28, it says, Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Look at the purpose of you laboring with your hands. The reason you do this is so that you can pay your bills, so that you can provide, so that you can have food on the table. So that you, No, that's not what it's saying. It says the reason you labor is so that you can have to give to him that needs. This is radical. This is, this is, well, this is radical. There's a lot of it. Well, no, the reason I'm working is I've got car payments. I've got insurance payment. I've got house payment. I've got to have food. I've got to have clothes. I've got kids. I've got kids that are going through college. I've got to work so that I can do all of these things. No, the Bible says the reason you work is so that you can have, so that you can be a blessing to other people. And I know that there's people all over the world right now saying, this is not the way it works in the real world. You preachers, can preach things like this. But you know, somebody's got to go out and work and make money and stuff. You don't have everybody just give it to you. Well, anyway, I could debate that. But my point is that no, the real reason that you work is so that you can prosper and be a blessing to other people. This is exactly what Matthew chapter 6 is saying. Matthew chapter 6 is saying, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and then all of these things. And the things that it's talking about are what you eat, where you sleep, what you're clothed with. Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 33, if you go study that. And it says that when you put first the kingdom of God in your finances, then God will supernaturally take care of your needs. And God is El Shaddai, not El Chipo. God will take care of you better than you would ever take care of yourself. You know, I had a man that for a number of years, I think it was 12 years, he bought me new cars. Uh, I would go and buy the car, but he made the payments on it. So it was in, you know, he, he bought these cars for me and he bought me really nice cars. And I actually went to him one time and I said, this is embarrassing. I said, people look at me and ask what I do for a living. When I tell them I'm a minister, they think, well, a minister shouldn't be driving this nice of a car. And I tell him, I said, but it's a gift. What do I do? Turn it down and go drive something that is less so that I could look better in your eyes? That's just, that's bad business, amen. This man was buying these cars for me. And I told him, I said, it's embarrassing. 
AND HE CAME BACK TO ME AND HE SAYS, IF YOU AREN'T EMBARRASSED ABOUT YOUR LEVEL OF PROSPERITY, THEN GOD'S NOT YOUR SOURCE. AND MAN, THAT WAS, YOU TALK ABOUT A PARADIGM SHIFT. THAT WAS A PARA-QUARTER SHIFT. I MEAN, THAT WAS HUGE. BUT HE BEGAN TO EXPLAIN, GOD PAVES HIS STREETS WITH TRANSPARENT GOLD. GOD MAKES HIS GATES OUT OF ONE LARGE PEARL. He, THE FOUNDATIONS OF THE NEW JERUSALEM ARE PRECIOUS STONES. GOD IS EL Shaddai, NOT EL CHIPO. AND GOD WILL BLESS YOU WHEN YOU PUT FIRST THE KINGDOM OF GOD. BUT MOST PEOPLE DO NOT PUT FIRST THE KINGDOM OF GOD IN THEIR GIVING. THEY ACTUALLY PUT FIRST THEMSELVES. AND I KNOW SOME OF YOU MAY DISAGREE WITH THAT, BUT LET ME JUST GIVE YOU SOME EXAMPLES HERE. I'VE HAD PEOPLE COME TO ME BY THE THOUSANDS AND SAY, YOU KNOW, I'D LOVE TO HELP YOU AND I'D LOVE TO HELP YOU DO THESE THINGS, BUT I JUST DON'T HAVE IT. THE TRUTH IS THEY HAVE MONEY. THEY HAVE A LOT OF MONEY THAT FLOWS THROUGH THEIR HANDS. WHAT THEY MEAN IS I AM PUTTING FIRST MY KINGDOM. I'M GOING TO PAY ALL OF MY BILLS FIRST. I'M GOING TO PAY MY MORTGAGE, MY INSURANCE, MY HOUSE PAYMENT, MY CAR PAYMENT. I'M GOING TO GO OUT AND USE uh, THIS MONEY TO ENTERTAIN MYSELF, TO ENTERTAIN MY FAMILY. I'M GOING TO DO ALL OF THESE THINGS. AND IF I HAD ANYTHING LEFT OVER, I'D BE GLAD TO GIVE TO GOD. THAT'S NOT FIRST FRUITS. THAT'S LAST FRUITS. YOU NEED TO GIVE TO GOD FIRST. YOU NEED TO PUT GOD FIRST IN YOUR GIVING. YOU KNOW, SOME OF YOU WATCHING THIS PROGRAM PROBABLY HAVE A BUDGET. AND I CAN GUARANTEE YOU THAT THE AVERAGE PERSON, WHEN THEY WRITE DOWN A BUDGET, THEY WRITE DOWN WHAT THEIR MORTGAGE PAYMENT IS their, OR THEIR RENT. THEY WRITE DOWN WHAT THEIR CAR PAYMENT IS, THEIR INSURANCE, THEIR FOOD, THEIR, uh, YOU KNOW, ENTERTAINMENT, THEIR CLOTHES. THEY WRITE ALL THESE THINGS DOWN. AND MOST PEOPLE, WHEN THEY MAKE OUT A BUDGET, DON'T EVEN PUT GIVING IN THERE. BUT IF THEY DO, IT'S KIND OF LEFT OVER. AND IF YOU EVER GET INTO A PINCH WHERE YOU HAD SOME EMERGENCY COME UP, THE VERY FIRST THING THAT MOST PEOPLE DO IS TO CUT BACK ON THEIR GIVING. YOU KNOW, I SAW A BARNA SURVEY THAT IN 2008, RIGHT THERE AT THE END OF 2008 AND 2009, WHEN THE STOCK MARKET CRASHED AND WE HAD WHAT SOME PEOPLE CALL THE GREAT RECESSION, GEORGE BARNA DID A SURVEY AND FOUND OUT THAT THE NUMBER ONE WAY THAT CHRISTIANS COPED WITH THE DOWNTURN IN THE ECONOMY WAS THAT THEY DECREASED THEIR GIVING. MOST PEOPLE SEE GIVING TO THE LORD AND TO THE LORD'S WORK AS SOMETHING THAT IS EXTRA. IF YOU HAVE ANY EXTRA, IF YOU HAVE ANY LEFT OVER AFTER ALL OF THESE OTHER THINGS ARE TAKEN CARE OF, THEN YOU'RE GLAD TO GIVE AS LONG AS IT DOESN'T CRAMP YOUR STYLE, AS LONG AS IT DOESN'T PUT YOU IN A POSITION WHERE YOU HAVE TO DO WITHOUT SOMETHING THAT YOU REALLY WANT. IF YOU HAVE SOMETHING LEFT OVER, THEN YOU'LL BE GLAD TO GIVE INTO THE KINGDOM OF GOD. THAT IS NOT PUTTING FIRST THE KINGDOM OF GOD. TO PUT FIRST THE KINGDOM OF GOD MEANS THAT IF YOU WRITE OUT A BUDGET, THE VERY FIRST THING YOU DO IS SAY, MAN, 10%. AND AGAIN, I'M NOT LIMITED TO 10%. THAT'S WHAT IT WAS UNDER THE OLD COVENANT. WHAT WE HAVE UNDER THE NEW COVENANT IS SO MUCH BETTER THAT NOW IT'S VOLUNTARY INSTEAD OF DICTATED THE WAY THAT THE TITHE WAS. BUT I BELIEVE YOU OUGHT TO BE GIVING MORE THAN 10%. BUT ANYWAY, WHATEVER IT IS, 10%, 15 20 WHATEVER IT IS THAT YOU DESIRE TO GIVE, MOST PEOPLE DON'T WRITE THAT DOWN FIRST AS I'VE GOT TO HAVE THIS MUCH MONEY BECAUSE THIS IS HOW MUCH I WANT TO GIVE. YOU KNOW, A FARMER, IF YOU GO OUT AND IF YOU, you SIT THERE AND SAY, ALL RIGHT, I NEED THIS MUCH MONEY TO COME IN FOR MY CROPS, DID YOU KNOW HOW MUCH MONEY YOU NEED, HOW MUCH CROPS YOU NEED TO GROW UP DICTATES HOW MUCH YOU PLANT. LET'S SAY THAT YOU NEEDED, YOU KNOW, A HUNDRED ACRES OF WHEAT TO COME UP AND YOU NEEDED THIS WHEAT CROP IN ORDER TO BE ABLE TO PAY ALL OF THE THINGS. WELL, THEN THAT DICTATES HOW MUCH YOU SOW. WHAT YOU REAP IS DICTATED BY WHAT YOU SOW. AND SO WHEN IT COMES TO YOUR PERSONAL THING, DID YOU KNOW, HERE'S THE WAY YOU OUGHT TO LOOK AT IT. IF YOU WANT $100,000, IF THAT'S YOUR GOAL AND YOU NEED $100,000 OR $150,000 a year or something for you. Well, then that should dictate how much you sow. And I believe that the minimum ought to be 10%. So if you need $100,000, well, then you ought to plan. God, I want to give $10,000 this year. And you write that down. And that ought to be the first line on your budget. See, that's putting first the kingdom of God. But no, most people put first all of their needs 
And then if there's something left over, they're glad to give, but it's not the focus. And did you know that that attitude right there will actually tend towards poverty? God's system, if you do it correctly, you put first the kingdom of God. You put first touching people's lives, changing lives with the power of the gospel, and you invest your money into that. And when you get that attitude and you put first the kingdom of God, then God will supernaturally start taking care of your needs. And again, God is El Shaddai, not El Chipo. If God is in charge of taking care of your needs, He will bless you more than what you would have done. You know, I used this example on my program yesterday, but be, when Jamie and I started building our house, I think it was 30, um, 31 or 32 years ago, and we started building our house. I only, I could only qualify for $60,000 with a VA no down loan. I mean, we were not in a great financial shape, but because we had put first the kingdom of God, I actually had a house built that was probably worth $120,000 or $130,000 when I built it back 31 years ago. Today, our tax evaluation on it is nearly half a million dollars, and that's our house and property and stuff like that. But I'm saying that God took care of me better than I would have taken care of myself, than I could have taken care of myself because I put first the kingdom of God. I had a man who was a contractor literally build my house at cost and give it to me, and it saved me at least $60,000 in the construction of that house. And it's a nice house, and God's blessed us with it. So my point is that, see, when you put first the kingdom of God, then God will supernaturally start taking care of your needs. If you are under stress, under duress, if you can't sleep at night because you're wondering, how am I going to make all of this happen, and you, you feel like, I've got to do something, I would suggest to you that you haven't really put first the kingdom of God. When you take care of God's kingdom, God will take care of your kingdom. God will give you discounts. He will have people come and do things like this contractor that gave me my house at half price. God will have people come and bless you and do things to you when you put first the kingdom of God. And I know that some of you say, well, I do put first the kingdom of God. Can I look at your finances and see that? How much are you spending on all of these other things versus how much you give? You know, I had a man that this man that I was talking about that bought me these cars for 12 years and stuff. And this man, um, he, he lived in a very nice house. I mean, an expensive house, much nicer house than what I had. He drove really nice cars and stuff like this. And he was a preacher and people criticized him. But did you know what they didn't understand was that this man gave a lot. And when you give, when you put first the kingdom of God, you cannot outgive God. God will supernaturally cause you to prosper. He will take care of your kingdom when you take care of his kingdom. And so here's what I told people, that they criticized him for the house that he lived in and the cars that he drove and things like this. But I knew behind the scenes how much he was giving away. And he was giving away somewhere around thirty to $40,000 per month. And I don't know his total situation, but I was at his house one time when he gave me, I think it was uh, $20,000 for speaking at his church. And there was a friend of mine that was staying with him and he gave him a brand new Cadillac that was worth over $30,000. So that right there was about $55,000. And then a friend came through, a missionary, and he gave him $10,000 for his ministry. So that was a, what would that have been? $45,000 that he gave away in one day that I was there. So when you add up this man's giving, his house that he lived in was only about 14 months worth of his giving. Now see, some people only look at the fact that he lived in a multi-million dollar house and they say, well, man, he, you know, a preacher shouldn't be living like that. But don't ever criticize a man's harvest until you see how much seed he has planted. Your harvest is determined by the seed that you plant. 
THIS MAN GAVE SO MUCH THAT THE HOUSE HE LIVED IN, EVEN THOUGH IT WAS AN EXPENSIVE HOUSE, IT WAS ONLY ABOUT 14 MONTHS WORTH OF HIS GIVING. HOW MANY OF YOU WOULD LIKE TO LIVE IN A HOUSE THAT EQUALED 14 MONTHS WORTH OF WHAT YOU'VE GIVEN? <laughs> AMEN. I CAN JUST SEE SOME OF YOU RIGHT NOW FIGURING THIS OUT. And BOY, YOU GIVE A HUNDRED DOLLARS A MONTH, AND SO 14 MONTHS, $1,400. HOW MANY OF YOU WOULD LIKE TO BE LIVING IN A $1,400 HOUSE? SEE, YOU CAN'T CRITICIZE A PERSON'S HARVEST UNTIL YOU SEE HOW MUCH SEED THEY'VE GIVEN. I WAS VISITING WITH CREFLO DOLLAR ONE TIME. HE'S BECOME A VERY GOOD FRIEND OF MINE, AND THIS MAN'S BEEN A BLESSING TO ME. AND WE WERE TALKING, AND PEOPLE WERE CRITICIZING CREFLO BECAUSE HE LIVES IN A NICE HOUSE. I'VE NEVER SEEN HIS HOUSE. I'VE HEARD PEOPLE TALK ABOUT IT, BUT HE LIVES IN A NICE HOUSE. HE, he DRIVES A ROLLS ROYCE. IT WAS GIVEN TO HIM. HE DIDN'T BUY IT. PEOPLE GAVE IT TO HIM. HE ACTUALLY GOT SO EMBARRASSED OVER DRIVING THIS FANCY CAR, A BLACK MAN, YOU KNOW, DRIVING THIS FANCY CAR. HE FIGURED PEOPLE WERE EITHER GOING TO THINK HE WAS A DRUG DEALER OR, uh, YOU KNOW, SOMETHING, OR HE HAD STOLEN THE CAR. AND SO ANYWAY, HE SOLD THE CAR BECAUSE OF WHAT PEOPLE WOULD THINK ABOUT HIM. AND THEN THE LORD GOT ON HIS CASE AND HE SAYS, THOSE PEOPLE GAVE THIS TO YOU AS A GIFT. I INSPIRED IT. THIS WAS MY GIFT TO YOU, AND YOU DIDN'T APPRECIATE IT. AND CREFLO HAD TO REPENT. AND HE WENT AND BOUGHT THE CAR BACK AT A LOSS. AND SO HE'S DOING IT OUT OF OBEDIENCE. BUT PEOPLE CRITICIZE CREFLO OVER THE LIFESTYLE THAT HE LIVES. AND WE WERE TALKING ABOUT THIS ONE TIME, AND I FORGET THE DETAILS. I'LL PROBABLY GET SOME OF THIS WRONG. FORGIVE ME, CREFLO, OR ANYBODY ELSE IF I DON'T SAY IT EXACTLY. BUT AS WE TALKED, HE HAS GIVEN AWAY, I THINK, OVER A HUNDRED HOMES. HE'S PAID PEOPLE'S HOMES OFF. HE'S SOWN HOMES. WHEN YOU SOW A HUNDRED HOMES, YOU CAN'T HELP BUT REAP A VERY, VERY NICE HOME. HE HAS GIVEN AWAY MULTIPLE HUNDREDS OF CARS TO PEOPLE, AND BECAUSE OF THAT, HE REAPED BACK A ROLLS ROYCE THAT WAS EVEN EMBARRASSING TO HIM BECAUSE IT WAS SO NICE AND STUFF. BUT SEE, DON'T CRITICIZE CREFLO'S HARVEST UNTIL YOU SEE HOW MUCH SEED HE'S PUT IN THE GROUND. THE PEOPLE THAT ARE CRITICIZING CREFLO, I CAN GUARANTEE YOU, THEY HAVEN'T SOWN A HUNDRED HOMES INTO OTHER PEOPLE. THEY HAVEN'T SOWN HUNDREDS OF CARS INTO OTHER PEOPLE'S LIVES, AND YET THEY'RE QUICK TO CRITICIZE HIM. DON'T EVER CRITICIZE A PERSON'S HARVEST UNTIL YOU SEE HOW MUCH SEED THEY'VE PUT IN THE GROUND. WHEN YOU GET TO WHERE YOU SEEK FIRST THE KINGDOM OF GOD, WHEN YOU ARE USING YOUR RESOURCES TO BLESS OTHER PEOPLE, I GUARANTEE YOU, YOU START A SUPERNATURAL, DIVINE FLOW TOWARDS YOU WHERE GOD WILL ADD ALL OF THESE OTHER THINGS TO YOU, MATTHEW 6, 33. AND THAT'S A PROMISE OF GOD. IT SAYS IN MARK CHAPTER 10 THAT THERE'S NOT A SINGLE PERSON, NO MAN THAT HATH LEFT HOUSE, FATHER, MOTHER, BROTHER, SISTER, LANDS FOR MY SAKE, BUT HE WILL RECEIVE A HUNDREDFOLD IN THIS LIFE WITH PERSECUTION. IF YOU TRULY HAVE A PURE HEART AND THE MOTIVE BEHIND YOUR GIFT IS MORE IMPORTANT THAN YOUR GIFT, BUT WHEN YOU START GIVING AND TRULY PUTTING GOD'S KINGDOM FIRST, GOD WILL START MULTIPLYING FINANCES TO YOU A HUNDRED TIMES IN THIS LIFE, NOT JUST IN THE ONE TO COME, BUT IN THIS LIFE. SO THE WAY UP IN GOD'S KINGDOM IS DOWN TO HUMBLE YOURSELF. THE WAY TO PROSPER IN GOD'S KINGDOM ISN'T TO HOARD, BUT IT'S TO OPEN UP YOUR HANDS AND START GIVING AND USING YOUR MONEY TO PROSPER AND BUILD FIRST THE KINGDOM OF GOD. WHEN YOU PUT GOD'S KINGDOM FIRST, GOD WILL SUPERNATURALLY START BUILDING YOUR KINGDOM, AND YOU CANNOT OUTGIVE GOD. MAN, I TESTIFY TO THAT. I BEAR WITNESS TO IT. I AM NOT THE PERFECT EXAMPLE. I HAVEN'T DONE AS MUCH AS WHAT, LIKE I WAS TALKING ABOUT CREFLO DOLLAR, BUT MAN, I'VE GIVEN AWAY DOZENS OF CARS, AND YOU KNOW WHAT? I'VE HAD MULTIPLE CARS GIVEN TO ME. I HAVE GIVEN FINANCES, HUNDREDS OF THOUSANDS OF DOLLARS, MILLIONS OF DOLLARS. I'VE GIVEN TO OTHER PEOPLE TO HELP THEM IN THEIR NEED. AND YOU KNOW WHAT? BECAUSE OF IT, GOD BLESSES ME, AND FINANCES COME BACK. I'M TELLING YOU, THIS IS HOW YOU PROSPER IN GOD'S KINGDOM. I'M OUT OF TIME TODAY, BUT I'VE GOT THIS TEACHING ENTITLED FINANCIAL STEWARDSHIP I WOULD ENCOURAGE YOU TO PLEASE GET THIS. I'VE GOT IT IN ENGLISH, IN SPANISH. I'VE GOT STUDY GUIDES. I'VE GOT DVDs, CDs ON THIS, AND WE'VE GOT AN EXTRA BONUS uh, DVD THAT IS THE TESTIMONIES OF OTHER PEOPLE 
who have taken these same principles that I'm talking about, put them into practice, and because of it, they are very prosperous people, and they're just giving testimony to this works. If you'll listen, our announcer will give you information about how you can receive all of these products. Andrew's complete teaching titled Financial Stewardship is available in either a CD or DVD album or as a book or companion study guide. Also available is the Financial Breakthroughs DVD, which includes six true stories of people that experience the freedom of turning their finances over to God. Each of these valuable resources is available for a gift of any amount. Or you can get the Financial Stewardship Package. This package includes the book, study guide, and your choice of either the CD or DVD album, as well as the Financial Breakthroughs DVD. This package has a catalog value of $115, but you can get it today for only $80. Also, Andrew would like to make available his redesigned Living Commentary Bible software. Download your copy of Andrew's Living Commentary and start studying through the Bible with Andrew today. The Living Commentary is available for both Mac and PC for a gift of only $120 exclusively as a download at awmi.net. The individual topic highlighted on today's broadcast is available as an audio CD for a gift of any amount when you write or call. We encourage everyone to give because there's a blessing in giving. But if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide today's teaching free of charge. You can order resources or become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. Or call our helpline Monday through Friday from 4.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time at 719-635-1111. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. Before you even have a need, God has already supplied your need. I know that all day long people are being blessed here and their lives are being changed. If there's anything you want to know about anything, then Jesus is the one. Folks, the moment you get saved, you ought to show the world what Jesus has done for you. I'm just enjoying being fed by people that have walked places that I haven't walked. If you lay foundations in people's lives, they will get a hold of grace. Because you can't be a pastor and do what a pastor does without grace. I feel like this is an opportunity at the ministers conference for ministers to receive the ministry that we need. You're going to speak to the mountain and it's going to move. But first you've got to have faith in God. It's time for us to rediscover the full power of the Holy Spirit. Hello, this is Andrew Womack, and I'd like to encourage you to check out our Gospel Truth TV. You are going to be blessed, so check it out. It's 24-7, gospeltruth.tv.